too man oh man it has been a minute bro it has been a quick quick minute since i've done one of these old school top three to four destination videos but today we are here with the top four destinations for Paul George in the 2018 NBA offseason. So you guys sit back and relax. But before we go any further, I want to give a shout out to the sponsors, Hardwood Amino. You see, Hardwood Amino is basically like the basketball version of Twitter. Yes, it is that great. You can go on there, do polls. You can also do trivias. You can also do games. You can do posts, create your own page. Y'all also follow me on Hardwood Amino. But aside from that, they have a chat room that is live where they ask some questions and they put everybody in a chat or you can add and join and stuff like that. And you can just talk about that topic and interact with other people. And you can also make your own chat room as well so other people can come in and talk about the topic that you created for that chat room. But make sure you guys download the app and follow me on there as well as I have my own account. But now that we are done with the sponsors of the video, Let's move on to the fourth best destination for Paul George. Number four, the New Orleans Pelicans. Now, when it comes to the Pelicans, I believe that they definitely have a shot that a lot of people are not talking about. Now, obviously, this team is not the perfect fit or doesn't have the greatest cap room or financial standings as all the other candidates to sign players like PG or Kawhi or LeBron have primarily PG for the sake of this video, but they definitely have a shot in signing a player like Paul George. I mean, they have an MVP candidate in Anthony Davis who could realistically win the MVP if they can get a third seed. And depending on what they do in the offseason, if they get someone like a Paul George or even do a sign and trade with someone like a DeMarcus Cousins or even just sign DeMarcus Cousins and roll the dice for next season, Anthony Davis could be a potential MVP next year. And then you have someone like Drew Holiday who has definitely come into his own during the playoffs because the injuries it looks like that is somewhere far behind him rondo on the bench of this team coming alive in the playoffs we don't know how long that's gonna last but he is a solid player to come off the bench you have other pieces such as Nikola Mirotic, and who knows what they're going to do with DeMarcus Cousins. I mean, he's going into another year where he could get the most amount of money from the New Orleans Pelicans because they have his bird rights. But let's be honest, he's coming off of an Achilles injury, and especially for big men, that's a huge injury to look out for. Nobody really comes back from that injury the same, and if he does, there are still some concerns on if he could basically be another Blake Griffin and get hurt each and every year as his skills start to deteriorate each and every Every year so more than likely they cannot keep them anyway because of the financial situation so you would have to let DeMarcus Cousins walk go to another team and then sign Paul George but let's say they let DeMarcus Cousins walk and hope they can sign PG Will Anthony Davis, Drew Holiday, Rondo, Miritich, will that be enough? And as well as Alvin Gentry, because I believe he's a solid coach. Will that be enough to convince Paul George to go to New Orleans? And more likely that will not. But I think the big thing is playing with Anthony Davis. And I don't think Paul George's legit play with an elite level big man. You could say Roy Hibbert, but he was not an elite level big man. He was a good rim protector. And if you look at his numbers, he was only really good on the defensive side of the ball. So man, when it comes to Paul George and the Pelicans, they definitely have some stuff they need to work out financially, but it is definitely a possibility. And who wouldn't want to see Paul George and Anthony Davis, two of the better players in the NBA, play side by side? Number three, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, when it comes to this team and Paul George, they definitely have a chance to kiss and make up and hope things work out next season because we all know the Oklahoma City Big Three definitely was a huge failure. Now, when it comes to this team and this roster, what are they going to do moving forward? And that is the real question when it comes to this team and keeping Paul George because Paul George has a chance to just re-sign in Oklahoma City as Carmelo Anthony will be coming off of the books and hopefully they don't re-sign him and just try it again because we all know it's going to be a failure if they do that and maybe they could attract some free agents during that stretch but the problem that I see with the Oklahoma City team is that Billy Donovan doesn't look like he's going anywhere anytime soon and Russell Westbrook let's be real he's not going to change the way he plays and is that enough for Paul George to say hey yo I'm out of here I can't take it 
But there are reports that Paul George may stay. He says he likes it in Oklahoma. He likes fishing or whatever. But let's be real, you can fish anywhere. And when it comes to Paul George, is LA more enticing being the hometown? Is a place like Philly more enticing? Is a place like New Orleans more enticing? Even going to play with LeBron in Cleveland if they can pull off a sign and trade and stuff like that. Are the other offers more enticing and is he willing to play in Oklahoma again and go through it? And let's say he does and signs a multi-year deal, is Melo going to come off the books and are they going to re-sign him? There are a lot of questions with this Oklahoma City team, but I definitely do think that they have a chance. And that's why I have them as number three, because Paul George can always re-sign and just say, hey, I am going to stick it out here. Me and Russ are good enough players that we can bring home a championship and compete in the difficult Western Conference. So, hey, I give Paul George props if he does that. But, hey, they're number three on this list for a reason. Number two, the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, when it comes to the Los Angeles Lakers, I definitely do believe that they have a huge chance of winning the Paul George sweepstakes because let's just be real here. When it comes to this team and getting Paul George, they have the hometown check and they definitely have the cast space to get another player. And I think if Paul George signs with LA first, because I think he definitely has to be the first guy to sign first, if they're going to build this super team. Supposedly, if he's going to sign there, LeBron James probably will go to that team because there are numerous reports that LeBron James will go to the Lakers if Paul George signs there first and that will definitely sway him to go there because look Paul George you're gonna have to swallow some pride just a little bit here because you are the lesser player among you and LeBron James and that is not even a debate and Kawhi Leonard it is not in his hands so you have to be the guy to sign there first and be the first domino to fall and if it's him and LeBron I don't think that they're going to dethrone the Warriors but I think that he has a better chance of beating the Warriors then staying in OKC and LeBron James has a definite better chance of beating the Warriors and I don't think that they will knock off the Warriors but let's say it's a competitive series or not they will get Kawhi Leonard in the offseason I know it's not a definite thing but Kawhi Leonard seeing LeBron and Paul George in LA already with the fact that he's from there I think that will be more than enough for him to go to Los Angeles and make that big three in LA that can and I believe will beat the Golden State Warriors if created. So when it comes to Paul George joining there, which has to be the first domino, but look, it can happen because let's say Paul George goes there and LeBron and they trade for Kawhi. You have a player like Lonzo coming up while LeBron is descending. Paul George will be entering his prime because people forget Paul George isn't even at the age of 28 years old. Kawhi Leonard is a young player and let's say worst case scenario Kawhi Leonard isn't traded for you will still get him like I said before in the offseason I mean the Lakers are the perfect team for Paul George and LeBron James to join them because they don't have to be traded to get them and Kawhi Leonard can just go there the next season even if they don't trade for him and when you have someone like a LeBron James who is your 1A to the Paul George who is the 1B if you have that for a season assuming that they don't trade for Kawhi Leonard that is going to be a good test drive to see how far they can go and if they push the Warriors to seven games or even to six games why would Kawhi Leonard not want to go to that team? It's just too perfect of a situation. And honestly, I can only think of one better. Number one, the Philadelphia 76ers. Now look, the Philadelphia 76ers have to be the most enticing team to any single free agent right now. You have Ben Simmons, who is a seven foot point guard, enough said. You also have someone in Joel Embiid, who is unstoppable in the post and can space the floor from time to time. You also have Robert Covington, who is a perfect three and D player. I wouldn't say perfect, but he can shoot the three ball at a solid level and he can play defense at an elite level at times. You also have Dario Saric, JJ Redick, assuming that he's going to stay next year now that he's got his money. TJ McConnell's a solid bench player and who really knows how great Markel Fultz can become. And when you add someone like Paul George to that roster, you have Robert Covington who is very inconsistent and I know Paul George can be as well but Paul George is a grade above Robert Covington. I'm going to take him any day of the week. And speaking of week, you're in the Eastern Conference. 
you are facing teams like Detroit, facing teams like Milwaukee, who are underachieving, disappointing teams week to week. Come on now. And then when you have a coach like Brett Brown, I think everything is perfect. And when you look at the fit, I don't think that there is any team in the NBA that he can go to realistically, of course, that is a better fit for him. In OKC, he had to play with someone like Russell Westbrook, who at times can be selfish with the ball. And let's be real, he just doesn't pass sometimes, and he turns the ball over at an enormous rate. But in Philly, you have someone like a Ben Simmons who's not always trying to attack. He can be passive, and being passive may help someone like a Paul George and his efficiency that has been up and down throughout his entire career. And then you have someone like Joel Embiid, Covington, and even Ben Simmons as well, who can play defense at an above average level. And for someone like Joel Embiid and Covington, they can play at an elite level. And adding Paul George, they were already among the five best defensive teams in the league last year. So man, getting Paul George, who was a defensive player of the year candidate early on in the season until, you know, Gobert and Embiid came into their own and Davis as well. But Paul George, he is one of the better defenders in the entire league. A two-way player can space the floor, helps Ben Simmons, and hell, I know Covington will become overpaid because more than likely he will be moving to the bench and if not his role still will be decreasing but you take the good with the bad when you're getting an all-star in paul george and if they can get to the finals hey i don't think that they're going to beat the golden state warriors but they will definitely be a big challenge for them and i thought last year that they would get to the finals and put up a good fight against Golden State, not beating them. I think they would have gone to like five or maybe even six, but getting Paul George could push them to seven. And as these players grow and develop, hey, this could be the new faction in the NBA. Supposedly if LeBron and Kawhi don't go to LA and make some other team down there. But at the end of the day, hey, Ben Simmons, Paul George, Joel Embiid, Covington, Redick, Sarich, Brett Brown as a coach. That's a solid team right there. And like I said earlier, which some of you may forget, Markel Fultz, we don't even know how great he's going to be. So, hey, if I had to pick a destination that's best suited, has a good market for him, can sign him actually realistically, I got to pick Philly. They definitely have a shot. And man, they got to be number one on my list. So that concludes this video. You guys let me know in the comment section where you think Paul George is headed this offseason. These are the four destinations that I think are either best suited or where I think he could go, where I think he should go. It's just all mixed in one. So you guys let me know in the comment section if I left the team off that you think he could go to. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on social media. Those links will be down below in the description box. This is your boy, Young Mustard, signing out. Y'all have a great day. Peace.